We're now halfway through the dumpster fire of storytelling, simply known as The Mandalorian. I should warn you, if you stumbled upon this video thinking, oh, this will be a fun recap video of my favorite show, The Mandalorian, no, that's not what it is. I mean, it is a recap video, and I hope that it's fun, but it's mostly an airing of grievances. I haven't liked this season at all, and uh, this is coming from a person who loves season one and two, thought the Book of Boba Fett was a disaster. I can't believe they finished arcs of The Mandalorian in that show. It's some of the worst writing known to man. And then The Mandalorian Season 3 says, hold my Veskar. Because this thing is a nightmare of writing. I, I just can't even begin. Well, I have began. I've done the whole season so far up until this point. I'm going to finish it out. I'm hate watching it at this point. Um, please subscribe if you, you know, enjoy watching angry, middle-aged, bitter men complain about a kid's show because that's what this really is at the end of the day it's a kid's show a show that my kids aren't watching we fire up the episode with grief karga on planet navarro man we have a bunch of characters that people don't know the names of so they said grief karga a few times in this episode which i appreciated because i can put a name to the face of apollo creed who i was previously just referencing him as this episode is going to be focused on his beef with Space Pirate Davy Jones, Spencer's Gifts edition. Seaweed Davy Jones lays siege to this rebuilt city, this beautiful utopia, simply because some of his pirate crew couldn't get a drink at a children's school that used to be a bar years earlier. I mean, kind of unrealistic expectations. Kind of a silly thing to go to war over, but here we are. That's the Mandalorian. The title comes up and we're treated to what is surely going to be the best moment of this episode. And that's a bizarre alien western song. It's it's hilarious. I love it. I, I dug it. I was like, oh yeah, remember the western stuff they kind of had in the first season? Where it was grittier. It, it was more simplistic. It, it felt like a one-man army sort of show. Like a Last of Us set in space. Uh, but now this show's colorful, it's poppy, it's punchy, it's it's for all ages, it's it's stupid. It's honestly stupid. But let's focus on the episode. Carson Tava, who I think's a new character, I don't remember seeing him before, he gets the distress call from Apollo Creed, I forgot his name already. And uh, he's hanging out at a bar, a local bar, there's another CG big-ass alien guy, I'm sure he's a reference to something to do with the Bad Batch or the Clone Wars or some spin-off crap that I've never seen. Animated, probably. Doesn't matter. Uh, a good group of people will see this character and be like, <laughs> and then they'll really wet themselves when he says the thing that Han Solo said. Good luck, kid. You're gonna need it. I don't think he said kid, but he definitely said, good luck, you're gonna need it. And I thought, oh, that sounds like something Han Solo probably said. And then I Googled it, and yeah, sure enough, of course. Because that's what this show is now. It's just member berries. We're now back at Coruscant. Look at that, these stories might actually meet up. That's how storytelling works. You don't just randomly start a new story thread without alluding to it or transitioning to it, which they did in episode three or four of this season. Now they're actually tying to it nicely. That That's how writing 101 is conducted. Anyway, back on Coruscant, Tim Meadows is there, of course Tim Meadows, uh, talking to the crew. Wait, what? Tim Meadows? What? what when did he join into this thing? Why? I, I have to say, Meadows is one of the most underrated comedians, just full stop. He's underappreciated. Whenever I see him show up, I just start laughing. He just has that presence. He's funny. Just everything about his demeanor. I don't know if he's supposed to be playing comic relief here. I think he's supposed to be serious, but I couldn't stop laughing. I'm like, Tim Meadows, this is awesome. New guy Carson has a chat with him. Female Mario Lopez makes a cameo. She's like, hey, remember me from that other episode? I'm here again. And then she leaves. Meadows isn't having it. He's like, uh, no. New Republic ain't doing this. You can make like Padme and go cry to death back on your planet with the people over there because this isn't going to happen. New Republic's not going to help? That's fine. Carson's got this. He flies his ass over at the Mandalorian Beachside Resort and Cafe where the Mandalorian are all prepared for him. They are all set up, ready to kill this single guy with a message. The whole crew's there. The whole family's there. Guns pointed at this poor sap of a character who's just trying to get some help. Mandalorians are like, yeah, you can make like Anakin 
and get the fuck off this sand because you don't like this crap anyways. He persists. Mandalorian, respecting Apollo Creed, has a nice little cave meeting with the Fast and the Furious dumbass crew, makes his case. It's not impressive. Din Djarin doesn't do anything impressive anymore. So second guy comes up, the big brute with the machine gun, looks like a Halo character skin. His speech was much better. Machine Gun Kelly puts it all out on the line, talks about how the fondlings need to grow up outside of cave, touching grass, having the sunshine bathe down on their helmets because they can't take their helmets off because this is a dumbass cult. And then it's off to the races. We have the ground fight. We have some space combat with Mando and Bo-Katan, who I wasn't sure was in this episode at first. Because when Carson first arrived at Mandalorian Bayside, I, I didn't see her and I thought, oh, you know what? She's probably constructing a new throne that she can sit on all day and sulk. But then she came sauntering up. God, I hate that she's in a freaking helmet. We have a decent action section. Again though, it's very Power Rangers-esque now. Everything's very colorful. A lot of the costumes look like masks you buy from one of those pop-up Halloween stores. Machine Gun Kelly finally gets to use this thing. Even Blacksmith Mandalorian Lady gets to take out some dudes. And I love that she still uses her blacksmith tools. No guns. Just walks up in there. It wasn't near as cool as what I just did. I can assure you. Spencer's gifts, Davy Jones isn't having it. In one last ditch effort, he tries to take out the townspeople. Bo-Katan, Din Djarin, they see what's going on. They take out that final engine, ending in a blaze of glory. And by glory, I mean the opposite. This ship crashes down, it burns, it blows up. Pirate guy's probably dead, I, I, I hope. Just a terrible character. For the job well done, Magistrate Grief Carva gives Mandalorian sanctuary at this city. He says, hey, you guys help me out. Why don't I help you out? Live here. Just, just live here. Be free amongst the people. Um, could they have lived there before? Did they have to like save the town in order to live in the town? I, I'm, I'm kind of confused. Did they really need to be off at Volcano Bay living amongst the dinosaurs? Or could they have just gone over to Coruscant or to, you know, one of these other planets and just, it just hung out? I don't know. Everything's very muddy. I don't know why I'm even asking because honestly nothing makes sense in this stupid show. For instance, they could have gone to Mandalore at any time and checked if it truly was toxic. Din Djarin went there in an afternoon, like driving 20 miles to the nearest Starbucks, popped off the helmet five steps out of the plane. Knew it wasn't toxic. So why did all the dumbass Mandalorians just believe that it was poison without even doing a flyover? Not even doing a test flight. You know, it's their home planet, full of history, full of knowledge and resources, but eh, we'll take their word for it. It's poisoned. It's toxic. Episode starts to wind down with blacksmith female Mandalorian telling Bo-Katan, hey, pop off the helmet. You trust me? You trust me? Take off the helmet. You don't need it. You're a daywalker. You're like Blade. Half human, half vampire, but in this instance, half... Regular person, half person that used to wear her helmet all the time. So basically just completely the same, but without a helmet. That's, that's the only difference. So she gets to choose mask on or mask off whenever she feels comfortable. And um, I think it's incredibly lazy, convenient writing just so that we can see Katie Sackoff in all her glory. And I have zero complaints about that because she is truly the only good thing in this show right now. Episode ends with Captain Tava. He, he's a thing now, I guess. Stumbling upon a mysterious craft out in space. This turns out to be a New Republic transport ship that had Moth Gideon on it. Had being the key word there. He was extracted at some point by, wait for it, Mandalorian. This is so fucking dumb. This show has no point anymore. And this was another mediocre episode. Sadly, probably the best one of the season. Really sadly, 
one of the best ones of the season because at least narratively it had some sort of a flow to it there was a beginning middle and end it tied in the coruscant stuff as bad as that is and yeah there there's some mystery going into the next episode i again i don't really care about any of this um i find all of it kind of just nonsense the show really wrapped up at the end of season two when little baby grogu or gragu was sent over to luke that that was it that was the game um, but now, now we're just spinning our wheels and this is going to go into just complete narrative nightmare fuel world. And I'm here for it. Lastly, I used to watch the show every Sunday with my family. I know it comes out on Wednesdays, but we, we waited to the weekend, had a big pancake breakfast. All of us sat down, my wife and two children for the Mandalorian episode. How's it going now? Well, my kids bailed after two in season three. Tonight I watched this show in bed next to my wife who was reading a book. That's how little interest The Mandalorian is to this family anymore. I want to hear from you, though. Where are you at with the season? Is it getting better? Is it improving now that things are starting to connect? Some of the threads are starting to make this sweater? Or are you like me and it's just really bad writing? Don't care about any of the characters? The Mandalorian crew, the cult, is really dumb now. The more they tell us about them, the more pathetic they look. I want to hear. Let me know in the comments. Like this video. Please share it around. Subscribe if you haven't. I post new videos every week on movies mainly. It's called Adam Does Movies. But The Mandalorian's a focus right now because it's a show that I, I watched every season and now it's just dipping to shit. So I thought, eh, let's, let's air grievances as a family. This is the way. Bum-ba-ba-bum-ba-ba-bum-bum-bum. Ta-da! Vroom-bum!